Welcome. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to implement an interface that is able to define signals that your classes that implement the interface must also have. Um, with that being said, this is not a tutorial on what is an interface. So I'm assuming that if you're here, you know what an interface is. And more precisely, I'm assuming that if you're here is because you are having an issue where you cannot uh, define an interface and also inherit from QObject in order for you to declare signals and then be able to use them around in your other classes uh, because you cannot inherit from QObject more than once. So I'm going to teach you how to do this using a method from Qt called QInterfaces and you know I'll, I'll show you how that works. So let's get started. So I made a little application here and I have some code already written to make the tutorial much more faster. If I run this we have this simple GUI with a text box, nothing special. We're going to use this text box to, Im to, to show some text for you guys to, uh, to, to, to see what's going on. So I have a couple classes. I have a class called Animal. And there's nothing important about this class for this tutorial. It's just some code in order for us to have a, a, some class that let's imagine this is a class that you have as a base class. And you have some, a, um, some code implemented. So there's a signal that says the animal jumped, we have a constructor, a destructor, and some function that says the, the, the you want the, the animal to start running. And over here, as you can see, there is really no code. It's just the constructor, constructor, destructor, and a run function that is empty. Again, this is just a class there just to, to have something about. And then we have a dog, which inherits from animal. And again, there is nothing. This is the class that we will be working on. So this dog inherits from animal. And again, there is nothing in the implementation file. And there's also going to be a duck. And this duck, like the dog, it is also an animal. So we want to make an interface called iSoundMaker, an interface that defines how an object that makes a sound has to work. So this could either be uh, an animal, but it doesn't have to be an animal. But in this case, you know, we're going to be working with animals to make this much more entertaining. So we're going to make an interface called iSoundMaker, and this, is, will, this will be the Q interface that you will be able to define the signal. So uh, you start off this by first, you include Q object. Even though we cannot inherit from Q object, you still need it because you have to define these signals. And then we're going to create the class iSoundMaker. And then we're going to create some signals. And honestly, I'm just going to create one more. What, I'm going to create one signal, and that is, uh, it's going to be a virtual signal, void, uh, make sound, and it's going to pass a string, which is the sound that it's supposed to make. And this is going to be a virtual, a virtual signal. These are completely okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You get the signals macro from including Q object. Now this alone is not enough. You also have to uh, register this interface uh, in the Q interface registry. I'm not sure if that's the correct name for it, but that's what we're going to call it for now. To do this, you automatically have a Q uh, declare interface. And the way to do this is you type the name of the class, and then in the next parameter, you put the same name, but as a string. And that's it. This is already, that's it. In, in essence, we are done. We have created a Q interface, but of course we have to, I have to show you how to use it. Now, uh, one note that I have to point out, let's say that this was inside a namespace. So namespace, my name, I just call it NM, namespace NM. That, that's, that's not very good. Let's just say that you had it in a namespace NM. Of course, you would also have to come here and say a name namespace, uh, I mean, colon, colon, iSoundMaker. And then in here, you will have to say and then dot iSoundMaker. So if you have your class inside namespaces, you would have to, you, you know, define it in this format. But in here, in the string, you will put a dot. Just just in case, just in case, this might be uh, important for you. Uh, let's get rid of the namespace. All right. Like I said, we are done. Now we're going to go and implement this interface in, in our other classes. So we have a dog and we're going to start with a dog. We do the duck next. And this dog, it's an it's an object that can make a sound. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to inherit from also from iSoundMaker. So first we have to include it, iSoundMaker. And then in here, we're going to uh, impl uh, inherit virtually from the iSoundMaker. So iSoundMaker. 
and then uh, this is where we have to do this things in order for it to work. So you have to also define that it is a that you are implementing a Q interface, and the interface that you want is the I Sound Maker interface. And I like this like this. I prefer it that way. And then, of course, as all interfaces, you also have to you know define the signal. The other one was a virtual signal. So in here, I just like to do it like at the bottom and say, you know, uh, let's just say define, the, uh, no, well, implement the I sound maker interface. All right, and this we had a void uh, make sound with a Q string and the sound override. All right, and that's it. So now what we're gonna do is um, let's let's make use of this sound. So I'm going to create a function here, public, and it's gonna be a slot, and it's gonna be the function that uses this signal. So it's gonna be initiate sound, and it doesn't take any parameters. And then in the dog CPP class, we're going to come down here, and we're going to implement it. So void dog initiate sound and then in here I'm just going to emit that signal which is make sound and this dog does woof all right it's gonna do woof and of course we need to um, call this function you know at some point in our application so that you can see how this signal works so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a timer in a, in a little random generator so it randomly makes uh, have this dog bark okay this is just so that you can see how this works. So I am just going to add two classes. It's going to be the Q timer class and the Q random generator class. And then in here, I'm going to say Q timer single shot. So this function, what it does is after some interval, I'm going to say 100 milliseconds, I want to call in this object a function. Which function? The dog uh, initiate sound function. So whenever this object gets created in 100 milliseconds, call this function, which will emit the make sound woof. Now, again, this tutorial, this the way we're we're designing this. This is I'm, I'm sure there's there's a way that you're looking at this and say this, there's a better way to design this, and and I agree with you. However, this is just for uh, education purposes. So basically, what I want this thing to do is to call initiate sound after 100 milliseconds, and I want this to repeat. But I want this to repeat at random. So I'm going to say, I'm going to add a delay. And the delay will be from Q random generator. And then from this, we get the, uh, where's my cheat sheet? Oh, yeah, global bandit. And this is going to be between 100 milliseconds and one second. And instead of 100 milliseconds, we're going to have this delay. So basically, the dog will make a woof sound at a random time between 100 milliseconds and one second and it will start after 100 milliseconds uh, after the object has been created now we're done we have implemented our interface and what we're gonna do now is we're also gonna do it for duck and because everything is the same I'm just going to copy and paste I'm gonna do it the lazy way so here make sound and then what public slots uh, void initiate sound okay and then we're going to include the i sound maker and then we're going to virtual public i sound maker all right and of course now our signal gets automatically fixed and then let's go and implement our initiate sound um, again i'm just going to copy from here and change this from duck to uh, from doug from dog to duck. Now maybe I misspell initiate ini, initiate sound. That's better. And I think I miss. Oh yeah, I misspelled it everywhere. Wow. Let's let's just fix that real quick because you know then, then we we don't want someone to to yell at us. All right. So there is initiate sound uh, for both duck and dog, and of course uh, in. And of course, this is supposed to be fixed because we broke it. And I'm also going to copy this to duck. And of course, instead of dog, dog is I should have picked a different. Um, I should have picked a different 
animal, not two with these. Anyways, we're going to include Q timer and we're going to include Q random generator. All right. So again, everything is the same. We're just going to make a sound. Of course, ducks do not do woof. They do quack. Okay. So let's just go over this real quick. We have a dog and a duck. They both inherit from animal and they are both implementing the iSoundMaker interface and the iSoundMaker interface uh, says that, that whoever implements this has to make a sound by giving a string and when we implement and the way we create this interface is using QDeclare interface and also defining the signal. In the dog class and in the duck class we ensure that we are using a Q interface called iSoundMaker which we inherit from and then uh, we create a function in order to emit this signal that we are implementing and then in this function all we're doing is um, we are making we're emitting the sound and then repeatedly after some random delay we re uh, create we make that sound over and over again all right and so this is we have implemented we we now are using it now let's actually create some objects. So what I'm gonna do is let me I'm gonna close all these these files to to make some some room, and then in here in my Qt interfaces class, I'm going to create another slot, public slots, and I'm going to do void on new sound, and this takes the sound that was made by the animal, and down here. Where's my destructor? I don't have one. Okay, I'm 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 not gonna bother with it. Qt interfaces. Come on. Uh, on new sound, and this takes a string. In here, um, what am I gonna do? Is I'm just going to in my UI. I have a sound text box, which is that text box you saw at the beginning in the GUI. That's all it is, and I'm going to set the text. To be that sound okay now now all we have to do is connect to that signal that is defined in the i sound maker interface and from there uh, we connect that signal to this function and that's it we are done so let's create two objects real quick so first we're going to create a sound maker uh, first we need to include uh, dog and then include duck and then in here, I'm going to say I sound maker. This is going to be the dog, new dog, not that dog, new dog. And this is the parent. And of course, this is a pointer. And then we're going to make one more for a duck. New, I can't type today, duck this. All right. And then from this, uh, if we run it, everything is perfectly fine. Um, I'm assuming that uh, I didn't forget something. I just noticed I did forget something. So if we go to duck, I forgot to, I forgot to do what here. Q interfaces i sound maker. I, cu I cut that from the from the warning down here. Anyway, so if we run this, this is completely fine. So on at this point, uh, that's it. We you have a dog and a duck. Um, you're, you're catching this reference with a I sound maker variable reference uh, pointer. So from here, um, we, we, we're kind of done. But we have I have to also teach you how to connect the signal that this interface makes to this slot. So normally, what you would do is you would say Q object that connect, and you would say um, you would say dog, and then you say that that dog does what make sound and you will connect it to this you will connect it to this on a new sound oh, I should say QT interfaces normally uh, you would do this however the issue with this is that dog is not a Q object and I'm sure that if you're here you probably ran, came across this issue and said now what do I do uh, so then uh, what you have to do here is we have to convert this into a uh, Q object. And you say, well, this is not a Q object, dude. Well, it is because Qt does something behind the scenes. And the fact that we put this in here, uh, it, it allows you to do that. So to do this, we're going to say Q object. 
uh, pointer dog as q object and we're going to do dynamic cast to q object the what the dog and then because this dog as object does not have the make sound signal this will still not work so this method does not work you cannot use this method to con to connect signals and slot instead you have to use the old method it is uglier but it is uh, i haven't found there's any other way to do this so what you have to do is again q object connect and you have to do uh, the dog as q object signal and what is the signal make sound which sends a q string and we'll, who will take it this q interfaces uh wait no slot 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 and what do we want on new sound q string i i like to format my connections like this so basically this dog which is this dog as a q object will emit a signal called make sound and this object will handle it uh, on this method on new sound q string and we are going to do the exact same thing and I'm going to get rid of this but now we're going to do it with duck 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 I, I can't I should have picked a different one and then we're going to do this and right there so what's going to happen is every time there is this make sound signal uh, the UI text box will display the sound that it makes and because we have this randomly generated we should see this flipping around from woof to bark or uh, no <laughs> from woof to quack over and over again so let's just let's just let's just hope so there it is quack woof woof quack woof so as you can so uh, as you can see we have implemented an interface on two different classes and these two different classes uh, they they, they then implement the interface and then you're able to use those signals and you're able to create a reference or you're able to hold the the pointer uh, of that object in the interface as an interface pointer so and then you're able to connect signals and slots using it of course the only downside to this is that you have to use uh, you have to use this method uh, the, the method with the signal and slot macros you cannot use the regular method if you have any questions, if you if I was too fast in some things and you want some clarification, feel free to leave a comment in the description. And I hope this was useful. If it was and you don't mind, uh, leave a like, subscribe if you like these kinds of videos. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.